To many people, a good metroidvania is the pinnacle of masterful level design. Games like Hollow Knight, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, and Super Metroid are some of the games most associated with the genre, and it's super interesting how all three of these, and many others, are set underground or inside a building and not outside. I always thought this was a design decision made to make players feel more claustrophobic, as many of those games are set in an alien environment. However, after making my own metroidvania, I think I know why, and it's not really what you would think. And just to get out of the way, I'm going to make this video's obligatory Dark Souls reference. So when people really think about metroidvanias, they generally think of 2D exploratory games. But really, the design philosophy could easily be applied to 3D games as well. So let's take this generic imaginary Castlevania game. Really what you're going to be doing is getting different swords and weapons and stuff like that to power up your stats, as well as different power-ups. So let's go back to Dark Souls, where the swords and weapons and all that kind of stuff is exactly the same, but in 3D, and as well, instead of getting movement power-ups, you get boss souls. So now that we've nonchalantly proven that Metroidvanias are the Dark Souls of platformers, let's get back to why none of them are set in an outside environment. So the way I'm going to approach this is, I'm going to try to prove that Metroidvanias are able to be set outdoors, and then try to do the opposite through elimination. So basically, we're going to create a fictional metroidvania in our mind that is set outdoors, and then through showing that exploration is really difficult or not really possible in that setting, we would prove the opposite. So we've got this little guy here, he's the main character of my game actually, it's coming to Steam rather soon, so check that out, it's in the description, shameless plug, but yeah, let's get back to it. So this is our imaginary metroidvania. So far, the character can only move left or right, there's not really any way to go up or down. So to add verticality, let's add something like, I don't know, a mountain. Ah, that's better. But actually, that's a bit of a cheat. There isn't any more choice added to the level, just more verticality. You don't choose whether you go up or down, you still go up now instead of just going forwards. There's still no more choice. So what could we add so that the player can choose between going right or up? Maybe a cave. So yeah, I mean, we kind of solved the problem, right? You can go up or climb the mountain, or you can go into the cave forwards. But actually, if you go forwards or into the cave, you're now in a level that's set underground, so that kind of defeats the whole point. So let's try to come up with a different way to add verticality and also choice at the same time. So what if we add something like a floating platform in the form of clouds or vehicles flying around? And yeah, that could work in some levels, but the problem with that is if you have floating clouds and then stuff like that, how do you put decorations in the level to make it stand out? All you're gonna have is more clouds, you know? So how do you make it stand out as a level? So the problem here isn't really exactly about having different paths, it's more about making the level interesting. If it's just comprised of different floating platforms, it's gonna get old quite quickly. Let's try to do the same thing now, but for going down. So we've got a little cave here, and I think you can see the problem immediately. If you go down, you're just going underground, which is what we don't want. So I think the problem we have here is that we just simply don't have enough dimensions to play with. So remember how I went on about Dark Souls around 3 minutes ago? That game is essentially a metroidvania in 3D in terms of how the areas are structured. But the interesting thing about Dark Souls is that most of the areas are not set underground, they are normally outdoors. And what's interesting about Dark Souls is that most of the areas are structured like a 2D game when in reality it's a 3D game. And the only reason it can achieve this without feeling claustrophobic and make everything set underground is because of the fact that it's a 3D game. And it feels 2D because it doesn't use all of its available directions at once. In a 2D game, you can go left, right, up, and down. And in a 3D game, you've got those directions plus two more, which is the depth. But in a normal 2D Metroidvania, you would have four directions, and the way in which Dark Souls makes you feel like you're playing a 2D Metroidvania is also by using four directions when reality has six available. The simplicity might seem like a bad thing, but if you use all six directions, it might be a bit confusing for the player. For example, Minecraft does this, and it's not unusual to get stuck in a cave and not know where to go. And this is simply because there are so many paths you can choose. So that's a bit of an explanation of how Dark Souls, essentially an outdoor metroidvania, manages to make areas that are filled with choice. So basically what I'm telling you is, if you want to make a metroidvania that is set outside, and you still want it to be 2D, then make a Souls-like game. <laughs> but yeah, in all seriousness, if you want to make a 2D Metroidvania, there are a few things that you can do to make it seem a bit more outdoorsy. For example, what I've found useful in my own game is in more linear areas you can make the setting outdoors, and then when you want the player to choose where they want to go, then make that a bit of a cave system. Anyways, I hope you liked the video. 
and if you know of any metroidvanias that are set outside and they do really cool stuff to be able to do that and still have exploration, then let me know in the comments. Thank you.